Hi, in this slide I want to talk about sort of how you could do a manual 5x5, 555 report. Um, when I first sort of invented this back in the early 80s, it was just a, a manual thing that I did uh, to remind everybody to stay focused. Uh, so it was a one-page report. I did it for all levels. So each rep had a, you know, roughly five, it could be two, three, core most profitable customers, two or three, four core, uh, gazelle target accounts, and two or three super losers we had to turn around. And uh, the branches then had their all-star uh, things for just their location, then the company-wide one, because we had four locations. Um, now, uh, you know, in the, in the, you'll see in LIPA 2, uh, uh, a five by five capability report that comes out you know, every week if you want to, but typically once a month. Um, so in the number one niche that we were going to renew back in those old days, for each branch, we had the 555. And as this, you know, new owner, CEO, I was going to go call on these guys with the branch managers and the sales reps. So it was a total team call. And um, everybody at the branches was totally on board as to who these guys were and that the answer was yes and we get case studies of, of emergencies or extra effort or things that were unusual and how people rose to occasion to make that happen for those guys and why it was so important to sort of get noticed by them and and basically take service to the next level uh, what i noticed though is that is it took about five to seven months not coincidentally the rule of five to seven of sending these reports out before i really started to notice a mental shift and specific proactive action on the parts of the branch managers and some of the reps, but it's really the branch managers because they all got paid on on uh, return on controllable assets. They were very net profit oriented, whereas the salespeople we had gone with a hybrid commission plan, and and where we paid them a higher percent of the margin dollar, but we had a transaction charge uh, on every invoice. So it gave them sort of a spiff and incentive to sort of build average order size uh, and, and sort of you know, educating them on the, on, the, on the supply chain building blocks and to show how our basic service brilliance, our big eight of service excellence, lowered some or all the elements of the customer's total procurement cost and improved their uptime. So we, we worked on that very hard, but again, it's just the repetitions of learning and educating and my asking and going over and over and over it again um, before there started to be a mental shift and people actually started proactively do stuff on their own. Um, and the whole reason behind it is there's no bigger return on invested time, ROIT, uh, than hyper-focusing on the these accounts uh, for Delta PBIT growth and improvement. Um, if you have niche anomics, in other words, they're all within a niche, you've tuned your fill rates to be the best for that niche of any of the competitors, you've got the service quirks they like, et cetera, uh, and guarantees on top of that, it's, it's, it's easy sailing, it's terrific. Now what happens at the end of the year when you look at year over year, Delta PBIT increases for these accounts, they're, they're all mightily up, very few are down. And the competition, if they did such a report, they'd say, oh my gosh, why are these all these people down, 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 down? And they think, oh, and they'd come with an excuse. They wouldn't really know that they had been invisibly alienating customers, uh, to, you know, having them call us and getting turned on by great service, and then they stayed with us. So we were winning on positive turnovers to use an NFL football term. So that was the, the beginning of the five, the triple nickel 555 five, five report. Now it's the five by five report that's uh, on an automated basis. Thank you.